So the seagull is set in the countryside of, um, a, a, an estate. And in this scene, uh, we'll see Arkadina, who's a, a famous Russian actress, and her son Treplev. And uh, she has come to her, her brother's country estate um, to, for a vacation. She's, she's an actress, and she's come to be on vacation there, and she's brought her son. And, um, and he's young, and he's in love. And the woman he's in love with is not really returning his affections. So he has attempted to shoot himself and it didn't work. Um, so this is the scene that, uh, that follows that. She's packing to leave, and uh, we'll pick it up there. Please, Mother, change my bandage for me. You do it so gently. The doctor is late. Yes, he promised to be here at nine, and it is noon already. <laughs> Yesterday, a stranger in the kitchen asked to what nationality you belong. Mm. Oh, your wound is almost healed. Now, you won't be up to any more of these silly tricks, will you, when I'm gone? Oh, no, Mother. I did that in a moment of insane despair, when I lost all control over myself. It'll never happen again. Your touch is golden. I remember when you still worked at the State Theater. Long ago, when I was a little chap, there was a fight that broke out in our court, and a poor worker woman was nearly beaten to death. She was picked up unconscious, and you nursed her until she was well, and bathed her children in the wash tubs. Have you forgotten it? Yes, entirely. Mm. Mm. Two ballet dancers lived in the same house and they used to come and drink coffee with you. That I remember. <laughs> they were very pious. <laughs> I love you again these past few days as tenderly and trustingly as I did as a child. I have no one left me now but you. Why do you let yourself be controlled by that man? You don't understand him, Constantine. He has the most wonderfully noble personality. Nevertheless, when he was told that I wish to challenge him in a duel, his nobility does not prevent him from playing the coward. He is about to beat an ignominious retreat. What nonsense. I myself asked him to go. <laughs> what a noble personality indeed. And here we are, almost quarreling over him, and he's probably in the garden laughing at us right now. Or else enlightening me in his mind into thinking I'm a man of genius. You enjoy saying nasty things to me. I have the greatest respect for that man. Now I'm asking you not to speak ill of him in my presence. I have no respect for him at all. You want me to think him a man of genius, as you do, but I refuse to lie. His books make me sick. You envy him. There is nothing left for those with no talent and mighty pretensions to do but to criticize those who are really gifted. I do hope you enjoy the consolation it brings. Those who are really gifted indeed. I am cleverer than any of you when it comes to that. You are the slaves of the convention. You have seized the upper hand and now trampled everything that you do. All else you strangle and trample on. Well, I've had enough. I refuse to accept your point of view. Yours and his. I hate you. That is the talk of the decadent. Go back to your beloved stage and act in a miserable dishwater place. You so much in I never once acted in such a play in my life. You couldn't even write the trashiest music called farce. You idle good for nothing. My red red. Don't be upset. Really, really, you mustn't. Forgive me. Forgive your wicked mother. Well, only you knew what it was like to lose everything under heaven. She doesn't love me, and I will never be able to write again. 
again. 